side of the uh, handbrake side. So we've got the same lead screw. Remember, you want to make sure you've got holes in here and a hole in the middle. Don't find any bolt to do this because it won't work. <laughs> Right. And then don't forget the washers go on both sides. These washers have a reason because they're it's a liquid You want to have this seal so it doesn't leak right so hence you see the bit of a rubber around the inside there so We'll put that in both sides remember and then we'll screw that on okay. Now remember this is got, all got air inside so with all the air We're going to have the issue of uh, bleeding which this is what this end cap is for and when we bleed it, it will pull the plunger out and then the liquid or the air will leak. And once all the air's gone, there's just liquid left. Anyway, we'll get to that later. Let's tighten this up. Okay. Nice and tight. Hand tight. You don't need to... You don't need to get He-Man to come and do the bolt for you. Okay. Right, it's nice and solid. And then, remember our our holding bracket here, so let's just uh, screw that in. This is the clutch reservoir. And before we put the hand unit on or anything, we want to just make sure everything's okay here first. And we don't want to assemble everything and then have to pull it all apart again. So let's take this off, pour some clutch liquid in, Pump it through and see where we're at. All right, so let me do that. This uh, reservoir is for clutch liquid because you don't want air in your line. When you've got air in your line, it becomes spongy and it doesn't work. Same with the brake. So what you want to do is use something like this. This is called DOT 40 brake and clutch fluid. It's a little bit more liquidy, watery than oil, but this is uh, quite important for the full function of a clutch. And that's or, or Hong Kong dollars. Hong Kong dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. 88 Hong Kong dollars. Yeah. So that's like uh, 10 US dollars. 10 point, 10 US dollars and 10 cents. It's, it's eight to one. Seven point, seven oh, point yeah. eight. Right? So it's, uh, uh, hang on, before I do that, one thing to remember about clutch fluid is it's very, it's um, a little bit corrosive on paint and stuff, so I'll put a cloth down here to catch any spill, all right? Pour it in, but don't overfill, and then we've got to pump it through, okay? And then as we pump it through, the liquid levels will go down. So at this end, we have the, the cylinder unit the slave unit and what we have to do is pump it through so that all the air bubbles are out so when we pump it this plunger will come out of the top and then you'll see bubbles coming up but we've got to make sure that we keep that down and that we keep pulling it back so that it can allow the liquid to go through so when you pull the plunger you'll see that this actually will go up right so as I pull the plunger you'll see the it go up like that right and eventually what it'll do, if I pump it twice, it'll come all the way out and then there'll be liquid in there and we have to pump it to get all the bubbles out. So when there's no more bubbles, we know that the uh, clutch assembly, the, the liquid is actually clear. Air bubbles, bad. Liquid, good. All right. It's the same principle as um, clearing the bubbles out of your hydraulic brake system. Exactly the same. So that's done. What we need to do is put the cap back on the end of this one. There we go, back on the end. Again, it's hand tight. It'd be nice to have a way to make that. Uh, like it'd be good if that was like a, have a, you know, a, a, grip, a grip or yeah, like a spanner thing on it. But anyway, it's not holding anything. So we'll put that back in here. Okay. And then we've got a Last test will be to pull the clutch lever and that should pull this. When I let go, it should go back. Pull, 
and back. Pull and back. Woohoo! Woohoo! Now we have a working, working system. Now the only thing you need to check is does it work properly when the engine's running? Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll tighten it all up and then we'll finish. We'll have one more test and then we'll put the uh, assemblies back on the handlebars. Put the assembly back on the handlebars and then we'll have a quick test for it. Down here I have the clutch cylinder. This red unit here. I chose red because it matches the color of my bag. And you see here there's no slack in the clutch. It needs to be a little bit tighter. And I'm going to do a test later to see if uh, if the clutch slips or not. If the clutch doesn't slip, it's fine. If the clutch slips, we we'll need to lower this down a little bit and reduce the the tension. All right. So that's the clutch. As you can see, it's working fine. All right. And then at the top, the clutch housing unit, the master cylinder over here, and the lever here. And remember, you got adjustment here. You can make it further in, further out. All right. But that's. That's what it looks like. So if you put the matching cylinder on, you got this one for the clutch and you got the one on the right for the brake. So they kind of match, right? The only thing you may notice is a bit of a gap in the, at, at both sides. There's a small gap here and there's a small gap here on this side. And if you want to close them off, you may have to dremel a little bit of a collar out of the, the front end there and the same on the other side. Uh, because they, uh, when they get too close to the outside, you don't want the handles to touch the sides, but also you don't want your mirrors out too far. Right. So, that's it. Job done. Time for a test ride.